You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. Our topic for this first segment of our program is Psychology and the Church, and we recently produced a DVD titled Psychology and the Church, Critical Questions, Crucial Answers, because we're concerned about the influence of psychotherapy or psychological counseling. Uh, We're concerned about the influence it's had upon the church uh, among evangelical Christians, that is, those who claim to that they claim that the Bible is their authority in all matters of faith and practice. Well, why are we concerned? Well, the foundational teachings and practices are contrary to what the Bible teaches about the nature of human beings and how they are to resolve their mental, emotional, and behavioral problems of living. And secondly, the evangelical church is one of the leading referral sources for psychiatric and psychological counseling services And that's alarming, an alarming indication that fewer and fewer evangelicals are trusting in the Bible as sufficient for their problems of living. Now, Dave, uh, last week we went over some of these differences between what the Bible teaches as opposed to what psychiatry, psychology, psychological counseling teaches. And uh, I just want to mention some of those things. One of the principles of psychotherapy is that man is innately good. I mean, how does that square with the scriptures? Well, I guess he would have to be innately good if you're going to get any good out of him. Right. (laughs) And that's all psychology has to work with is the subject of their talking and so forth. He's got problems, but also he's supposed to have the solution inside of him. So... You talk about it and uh, supposedly help him. Uh, On the other hand, uh, if man is not innately good, if the problems that we have or that we manifest in our behavior uh, don't come from some trauma I've suffered in my childhood Mm -hmm. or some influence out there from society, but they're actually my fault, uh, then... uh, we need another solution because how can I cure myself? Right. Uh, Scripture says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3.23. But, Tom, people would say, yeah, but that's about sin and forgiveness and getting to heaven. But this is about everyday living. That's where I need help. And the Bible's not going to help me with that. (laughs) Well, Dave, it does say, I'm looking at Mark chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. That's Jesus speaking. Adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Well, that's what Jesus said. And that's why David in Psalm 139 said, Search me, O God. Know my heart, try me, know my thoughts, see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. That's why Jeremiah said, well, God speaking through Jeremiah, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. Uh, So we need help from God, and we don't need help from Freud or Jung. And these men are pitiful when you study their lives. They were frauds. David, these uh, terms that I just quoted in Mark 7, mm-hmm. these individuals like Freud, Jung, Maslow, and so on, well, th- their lives uh, proved these things. They didn't have it together by any stretch of the imagination. Rogers, the great preacher of selfism and self-love and so mm-hmm. forth, he abandoned his dying wife for another woman, because after all, you have to look out for yourself. Right. Uh, so psychology. Do you remember how he salved his conscience? Yes, I remember. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he, he went to a uh, he went to a séance and supposedly contacted her 
in the afterlife. Okay. Yeah, she gave her approval. Yeah, wasn't that, that convenient? Yes, very nice. Yeah. But Tom, uh, in just uh, simple terms, the Bible is all about daily living, <laughs> and uh, it promises us the answers that we need. Am I unhappy? Bible gives me joy. I I have the not a formula. Mm -hmm. but the way to be joyful, to triumph over circumstances. You read Paul from prison. I mean, he's been beaten. It's horrible what he suffered. And from prison, Paul writes to the uh, uh, Philippians, my God will supply all your need according to the riches in, his, in glory through Christ Jesus. He says, rejoice evermore in everything Give thanks. So, uh, now, just again, in very simple terms, Tom, if psychology, and that includes Christian psychology, which is the same as secular psychology, if psychology has anything to offer of any value, mm -hmm. and it didn't come along until the 1800s, then obviously for 1800 years, the church was lacking what it needed for daily problems of living. How could Paul advise or, or anyone advise anyone else in how to, how to live? Of course, Solomon did that 3,000 years ago. So uh, it, that can't be right. Mm -hmm. Dave, it was certainly lacking in a, uh, one of the cornerstones of humanistic psychology, and that's self. That self is the solution to all of our problems. That's all you have to work with, Tom. Yeah. Now, the Bible does address that. Right. Um, certainly, uh, 2 Timothy 3, chapter 3, verses 1 to 2. Know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Not exactly a commendation for the self-teachings. Well, uh, lovers of yourself and narcissism, what, what's wrong with that, Tom? You've got to look out for yourself, and that's exactly what Carl Rogers said. You have to look out for yourself, and he taught other people to look out for themselves. Why would the Bible say that that's selfish? Um, and why do we innately recognize that selfishness isn't good? You know, do I dare tell a little story? It reminds me of the story. These two gentlemen sat down to have dinner together in a restaurant, and the, we were going to kind of serve them family style. And the waiter brought out a platter with two steaks on it. One was obviously quite a bit larger than the other. And the one guy stuck his knife in it, and he grabbed it. And the other guy complained and said, what are you doing? You're taking the biggest st steak. And the other fellow says, well, isn't that what you would have done? No, I would have taken the smallest one. Well, that's what you got. What are you complaining about? So you see a group of little kids um, you bring in some cookies to a party or whatever. Wow, they are just, it's uh, innate. Uh, Tom, you had five children. We had four. I don't recall ever having to teach our children, even little kids before they could walk, mine, mine, <laughs> you know. It's in us. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it comes from Adam and Eve. Uh, and now what are we going to do about that? The Bible says you've got to be born again. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to have some help from God. He's going to have to make a new person out of you. And this is what it offers. And psychology has nothing to offer, and it doesn't work. And as you intimated earlier, the lives of these great psychologists, Freud, Rogers, Jung, wow, Jung, these men had such emotional problems, problems of living and immorality and we're going to look to them. Dave, the prophetic aspect of this verse, 2 Timothy chapter 3, mm -hmm. which I just quoted, um, people say, well, come on. You know, men have always had problems with selfishness from mm -hmm. the Garden of Eden right, on. Right. And that's true. But I don't know. Maybe help me out here. I don't know any time in history in which... For more information about the Berean call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website, 